Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to the Bama Standard Post Game Show. Right after a victory, Alabama 26, Texas A&M 20. Yes, our anxiety levels are still up, but we're here to celebrate. Before we get started, go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, live chat, get rowdy, do your thing. If you're watching the replay, get in the comment section and show us some love there. I'm your host, Justin Wiley. With me is a great cast. We got Chris James. We got the incomparable Dan James, who brings all the likes and subscribers to the yard, the senior <laughs> analyst of Touchdown Alabama Magazine, Stephen M. Smith, and a man who does not hold anything back or sugarcoat any kind of analogy analysis, Lucian. Fellas, roll tide. Roll, roll tide. tide. What's, what's happening? What's happening? Man, I tell you what, guys, I'm going to start taking heart medicine whenever we continue on with this series every year because uh, this ain't it. <laughs> I need to go back to the days when we were winning convincingly, but a win's a win nonetheless. And uh, what I'm going to do, we're going to get our opening thoughts right off the bat. I'll start. Then we'll go to Chris James, Dan, Lucian, let Stephen M. Smith round it all out before we kind of start breaking things down. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. We, we have one more. We have a guy that probably could have helped us today when Malachi Moore went down. He's one of the best defensive backs Boy. to ever play for the University of Alabama. He is a national champion, an SEC champion. No all fly American. zone. Daquan Menzi, an All-American. What's up, what's up, what it do? What it do? What it do? What it do? And uh, one more late to the party. Ty Hayes. Is it, oh, what's no, going Ty, on, Ty? Ty, what's up, guys? guys? Ty, are you drinking right now? Well, well, we got we got the channel sponsored now by uh, by Shady Mile, Shady Mile Bourbon. <laughs> what better way to enjoy a win than by some Shady Mile rye and Shady Mile? Hold on here. Wait, if you if you give me the opportunity, I'm going to cut an elite promo. Don't doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, man, e even after a win, we drinking. God, well, <laughs> hey, you see this? <laughs> Uh, I'm that. turning gray with all the penalties they're out there committing. Jeez. No kidding. Six, yeah, guys. Six, 16 penalties. 14 16. officially. Oh, yeah. 14 oh. for 99 yards. Yeah, but so what we're going to do is we're going to give our, our immediate takes, and we're going to reset the order. So I'll go. I'll start us off, then Chris James, Dan James, Lou Sean, Stephen M. Smith, Daquan, and then the late arrival, Ty Hayes. Guys, first and foremost, going into this game, I wanted to see if we could take the training wheels off of Jalen Milrow. Could he have his moment? Could he have that Blake Sims 2014 versus Florida moment? Could he have that Jake Coker 2015 versus a and moment? And could he carry the team instead of the team carrying him? The answer today, ladies and gentlemen, is a resounding hell yes. Absolute amazing job by Jalen Milrow. Definitely his best outing to date 21 of 33 321 yards three touchdowns he had one oops interception which of course he, he more than made up for after that but i gotta give a shout out to jim today excellent poise when things start getting really crazy i would like to hit for him to work on letting the ball go when he needs to get rid of the ball and not taking the sack led to play another day either throw it out of bounds or just commit 150 percent to the run and get downfield but I can't hold it too much against him because he really was the hero of the day other than Jermaine Burton. I'm going to now pass off to Chris. Chris, what is your big takeaway, sir? Well, my biggest takeaway is how resilient our defense is. I think we may have the best defense in the country. Man, like when Malachi went down, we didn't we we didn't miss a beat. We, there's a couple of plays where we could have made there, but, I mean, you wouldn't have, we wouldn't have known that he wasn't on the field. But man, what my biggest takeaway was how the defensive line dominated. Mm. Man, that, that play when Otis knocked over, like ran over two linemen, forced two linemen to fall, and they got the <laughs> that man. Like, like when we want to turn up the heat, man, we don't have to send defensive backs anymore. We can just send those four and tell Braswell and Turner go get them. And we we can drop guys in the coverage. And Caleb Downs, man. Like he continues week in and week out. Told y'all, man. <laughs> that, 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 that's my boy. Uh, and on the offensive side, man, those false start penalties. Every time we got killing, um, he's nine pre-snap, Chris. Nine pre-snap, I mean, and it wasn't just no. one. It was it was from the tight ends all the way into the center. 
Snapper Fresh. It was Dupre, uh, Proctor, um, Latham, uh, Richard, uh, Latham, and uh, Jaden Roberts. Yeah. And every offensive lineman that played, that started, had a false start penalty. That's Except that's Booker. Unacceptable. That Except is Booker. Unacceptable. We couldn't run the ball first half. We ran it a little better second half. But a lot of that, those runs were on Jason McClellan, just him just making plays. Yeah, mm. you, you know what I'm saying? Like him bouncing it out, like especially that third down catch, the the, the pretty much the, the win the game. That was that was huge, man. Jason McClellan needs a I give him a helmet sticker for that. Um receivers, man, Burton, man, Burton, uh, like we already knew they couldn't cover. Can't nobody cover Burton, man. I tell people all the time, Burton's one of the better rock runners in college football. He he just he, we, we just gotta give him the ball, man. And um and and Bun, he takes the top off the defense. Like I, I just love what I saw today. Whenever he had time to throw it, we had time to throw it. We were good. So now this week, getting ready to to go to um home game against Arkansas. We need to dial in on the offensive line, man. We we yep. need to work on 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 getting off the ball. We need to work on protecting the mirror row, and we need to work on those just penalties, man. It's, mm. Those are drive killers. When we get behind the chain, I, I, I'm already ready for them to call out the punt team. Yeah. <laughs> third, third, any, third, anything past third, seven, third, and eight uh, or more, I'm, I'm suspecting the punt. That's how bad it's gotten because we know they're going to send the house and we're not picking it up. I like to see mm-hmm. more screens called. I don't think we called a screen today. They were nope. coming and we didn't run any screens. We yeah, uh, run I mean, one this year. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, man. And but the one, the one big mistake I saw from the interception, I felt like. He could have put got it in there sooner than not black before that safety. He kind of yeah. hung it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he could have gotten out faster or pumped it. It was a good yeah, play call. Just deep. stick it on him and get it in there. It was open. It was too Yeah, he was open. open. But that's other it. than that, man, um, other than those penalties, you take away those penalties, we blow them out in Aggie Land. So now um we're we're the front runners in the SEC. I was hoping that um Missouri would have held on today. <laughs> um, but but that makes it even sweeter for us to, to take the rest of LSU's hope. But um we we should handle Arkansas next week. Um, then we have Tennessee coming into town, and this Tennessee team that I saw, uh, I'm I'm not too you know too high on. But um, this, uh, if we play like we played today defensively, nobody's beating us with the rest of our schedule. And um, and I'll say not even Georgia. So, um, but but we have to clean up those penalties. Hey, real quick, we got a first super chat tonight from Don Parker, twenty dollars. Hammer Hatton. Okay, DP. So sorry, can't talk. Happy Bama beat A and M. A win is a win, but this team played very inconsistent with more flashes of what it could be. Shout yes. out to the defense for tightening things up. Milrose yep. show flashes that he is very capable. RTR. Damn. Dan, what you got, brother? Man, yes. Uh, you know the question this week was, can we win the championship with Jalen Milro? I think today proved that we can. The thing that's going to hold this team back is ourselves. You know, we got to yeah. get these penalties. I mean, on both sides of the ball, we got to get them under control. You know, the 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 mental errors. We have, we're have we making too many mental errors for a championship team. That's what concerns me. You know, the roughing the passer, you know, things like that. The You know, it's it, it just that, – that's just that's bad. But, um, you know, my player of the game would have been, you know, Jermaine Burton had he had – so uh, he had a lot of mental errors. So you know, I, I give it to Jalen Milrow. But uh, yeah. you know the the drops, the the penalties on uh, you know Burton, the fumble. You know he made too many mistakes. You know if we're gonna be a leader, I think Jalen clearly established himself as the leader of this team. You know, so we uh, we're gonna ride him. You know what I'm saying? So you know that's why you stick with guys. That's what they call development. You know what I'm saying? Our line, we just got to stick with them. And the, the reason in the second half we were able to run the ball more is because when guys keep leaning on you, I don't care how good your line is, guys keep leaning on you, eventually you're going to get tired. You're, tired. you're going to get yeah. tired, man. You know what I'm saying? So we were able to move the ball. Oh, yeah, that's shout out to uh, somebody got to read that for me. You, <laughs> user X, oh, user X, error X, 499. Caleb Downs saved the entire game with the final shove, forcing the toe out of bounds. Game ball yes. to Caleb Downs. Yes. Okay. We got one more. We got one more right after that. Let's see. Perry for $10. I said this last week about AM. Their offense could score zero points in the second half last week and now three this week. If you can control their D line, they're average. Right. Yep. That's deep. Ding, ding, ding. Lucian. 
You know, uh, like we highlighted earlier in the week, I wanted them to Jalen to really step into the limelight this week. And I think he answered that call in a big way. Over 300 yards passing, like Justin said, and he had a couple touchdowns to go along with it. But I think uh, the main heartbeat of this team today was the defense and how they responded to the different situation. Because if you guys remember early on, they were putting some pretty backed up <laughs> yep. situations and they did not yep. yield one bit. Uh, Caleb Downs, man, that dude, he's different. And I feel like if we can get a few more guys to start playing with his attitude to play through the whistle and not be so much about their antics and what they got going on outside the game, I feel like the team might be a little bit more geared to play in the first half of football games. But uh, Tim Keenan, too, man, eight to eight mm -hmm. solo tackles today. I saw 96 everywhere. Yes. And that was huge because we challenged our defensive line to step up. Like everybody was talking about, all oh, Texas A&M has got the best defensive line in the country, and they're good. For real, I'm not taking anything away from them. But the Alabama defensive line today, multiple people. Tim Smith, huge. Saw mm -hmm. him in the backfield making plays. Uh, Latham was out there. Uh, boy Bay. Yep. Otis, Otis yep. was Otis. just out there just being a bully. Yeah. Love hey, Lou Sean, I mean, uh, don't mean to interrupt. Tim Keenan led everybody in tackles today. Yep. With eight, eight, eight tackles and a sack from a D lineman. I, I challenged that, yeah, because uh, I wanted to see a D lineman show up and lead us in tackles again. It's been a while, it was hey. good to see it. Hey, yeah. hey they, they went and uh, switched out the Birmingham boys, they got rid of the deal and got Keenan. <laughs> it's like we got, we got the wrong one from the ham. <laughs> we got the wrong one from the ham. Oh, okay, let come on, Keenan. Yeah, yeah he ate today, Steven. What you got, man? I, I was just going to say, when Lucian just mentioned, we've been talking about Freddie Roach. Where's the D-9 pressure? And we saw it today. We saw it from Tim Keenan. We saw it from Boy B. We saw it from everybody. Right. And, this, and then, if not for a weak blindside block, Chris Braswell has a second <laughs> non <laughs> Right? So, so what a job Braswell has done. And then, you mentioned King of Downs, the performance that young man had, huge pick. But I continue to say this. Terry on Arnold seems to come up big when the moment you let DQ take that. Yeah, yeah, yes, I know Terry on will have a moment where he does something. You're like, Terry, what the world are you doing? But then he'll come back with like three plays that make you go, that's why Terry on's on the field. <laughs> and so love, love the growth of that man's back. And also, the double duty by Will Riker today, oh, kicking yeah. and punting. How about that? Put on the case. <laughs> Superman wears number 16. Will Riker yeah. saying, I'll do my job and James Burnham while he hurt. He earned some money. He earned some money today. Yeah, he sure did. He's he definitely been an NFL roster. Hey, Steve, let me ask you this. What do you think about us having close to a 200-yard receiver and another 100-yard receiver? Burton had 197. Bun had 96. I'll say this, and I mentioned this on in my own words on last week. I mentioned this. If Jalen Milrow goes 300-plus, you might want to start considering him in the Heisman conversation. What did he do? He went over 300-plus. Yes, he had the pick. If he would have threw that sooner, Nye Black is a touchdown. But we saw growth again from Jalen. I made a mistake. Flush it. Move on. We yeah. watched him flush it quick, and he moved on quick. And the combination of, 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 of the combination, touchdown. the combination of Milro to Burton and Milro to Bond, baby, it's grown. Yeah, so it's I, I said uh, there and said before the week, if Milro goes over three hundred, start couldn't him in that Heisman talk. He did his part. Well, let me, wow. let me say this. Let me say this for for him to get in the Heisman talk, he got to stop taking sacks outside the pocket. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. 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 Thank that, that, you. That, that's correct, also. That, that's correct. Also. That, that's the next stage of Miro's development. Throw the ball away, dude. Yep. I, 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 th I think sometimes, and, and this this was Miro's. This is Miro's issue, but this was also Tua's issue and Bryce and Bryce yeah. Young's issue at times. They're so gung ho about the big play, big play that when it doesn't happen, they feel like they failed. You mm. did not fail. Get rid of the ball and protect yourself, son. 
Right. All right, DQ, we have waited anxiously to hear from you. I know you got a lot of things being thrown at you that's just stirring in your <laughs> pot, and you look anxious and you're ready to go. Look, so look, 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 go look, ahead Justin. and fire it up, buddy. Look, 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 look. Justin. He got that new baby coming at him too. Oh, yeah. That's right. He does. And, and we we only have him for a limited amount of time, so we better let it right. <laughs> let him rip him right now. Yeah, yeah, fellas, I'm at work, man. I'm at work, man. So you know I'm dedicated to this, man. But anyway, um I'm excited that we got the win. Um y'all said it, and so I'm not gonna be long, bro. Um we are our own worst enemy. Mm. From what I mean, every game that we play, bro, it's all about what we do and what we don't do. It's all the time, man. I don't these teams that we play, except for Texas, which lost by the way. If y'all didn't see that game, we did. Um, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, I did. We we are our own worst enemy, man. If we don't, if we 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 are undisciplined at times. A lot of times, man, especially with these penalties, we are very a very undisciplined team, bro. And we have to clean that up, man. We barely got out. Man, we were supposed to win by two touchdowns today. Two. Mm. At least. At least, man. And we killing ourselves. I mean, blindside blocks. I mean, the guy is 20 yards down the field. He's not going to catch <laughs> Brad's yeah. wheel, bro. You don't have to do that. That's just being undisciplined, man. We can't continue to play that way. We can't, man. Because it's going to hurt us in the long run. We got by today. But we 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 should have won by two touchdowns today. Mm. Um, D-line. Play, they were ferocious today, bro. I, I, man, they answered the bell. Um, but we, we still have to get more pass rush in the beginning of the game. We're still starting mm. a little slow to me. We're still starting a little slow to me, man. Um, Caleb Downtown and all y'all already know how I feel about them, man. Y'all already know how I feel about them. Them two dogs, man. If we can get everybody to match them two, man, we'd be unstoppable, man. We'd be unstoppable every week we play. Jermaine Burton. He showed up today, and he's his own worst enemy, too. He's very mm-hmm. undisciplined, man. Mm-hmm. And he's a hot head at times. God, man, just think, bro. Just think, man. Mm-hmm. We know you good. We know you got the athletic ability, bro. We know you a dog. You ain't got to keep doing that stuff, bro. You don't have to keep killing yourself. And, and, and not that, you killing your team. You got to be able to relax and be able to think under that pressure, man. Jalen, relentless, man. He, after, I mean, he threw an interception. Came back the next play, man. He's he's not he he has amnesia at times, but I'm glad he does. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good to be man. When you have amnesia, bro, playing quarterback and playing corner, man, you have to be uh, you have to have a short memory, bro. Have to. All in all, I'm just glad we won, man. Man, that throw to the corner uh, after that interception for the touchdown to Burton. My gosh, that's an NFL throw. Not, not, you, man. Thread the needle. Not not only just that. I go back to I think it was a third down where. Caden Proctor, big job by him, uh, was able to get the defensive end away. Jalen yep, Milro yep. gets out of that pocket, yep. uh-huh. and he ran. Yep. And he ran. And I'm like, Jeez. there you go, Jalen. Run. Take off yep. with it. And I'm like, Caden Proctor, if yep. you can do more of that, yes. you'll be okay. If you can do more of what you just did right there, you will be fine. Yep. Push and pass the quarterback. That's all you got to do. And Daquan, to go with you before I'll, I'll give this to the tie. I'm not going to take too long. I, I want to challenge our team now that we've completed six games to play four full quarters. Right, right, right. Not wait to the second half because there's going to be a time where we go up against a team to where we can't afford to do that. And if yep. we continue to do that, it's going to turn around and bite us in the butt. Like you said, man, that we're our own worst enemy. There are times where we could have put the game away. Early on, 52-yard touchdown pass to Isaiah Bond. It was quiet. It was mm-hmm. done. All the life was sucked out of the stadium. And you're saying, well, that was so early in the game. No, that really could have been the end of it right there because they were beaten. It's like their will was yep. taken from them. And we yep. could have pounced. But then self-inflicted wounds Every time. took us right back out of it. Yep. Real quick, before Ty goes – I've got a super chat to get to. We got if this there we go. Davis Lewis Love. Why does it seem all of our run plays are in the A gap? Right. <laughs> Good point. No variety in the run game. The pre snap flags hurt. Milro produced with little run game, and I had a feeling yeah. it was going to come down to that. Anybody uh, want to? Hey, go? Hey, 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 yes, sir. Hey, 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 hey,
this baby girl crying for this food, so I gotta hop off of it. We appreciate you, brother. Hi, right, bro. Hi. Right. Right. Roll tide. Roll tide. Hey, hey look, look. Um, go ahead. I lost my train of thought. Damn, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Uh, we kind of have a set script when it comes to the run game, and I think that we need to deviate from that now. Mm-hmm. You know, I get it. We want to run. We want to be able to gash the middle, but don't live and die by it. Don't yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> don't yeah. lose a game because you have to force everybody to believe, hey, Alabama can run it. Dude, you got to have some variety now. We got to get into that bag like we talked about earlier in the week. Tyree Reese has yep. got to be innovative. We need the jet suites for the love of God. Please, please get some bubble screens in there. If they're going, if we're going to go against defensive Not line on front seven that are pursuing that hard, we got to throw that in the mix. Ty, you've been quiet way too long, mainly because we have people on this panel who can't shut up. But you know what? <laughs> we're passionate. We, we're, we're testifying tonight. But Ty, you you've seen a lot today. I know you got a lot stewing too, and I, I just want to turn the floor over to you for as long as you need, sir. Man, uh, where to begin? I I guess I first want to open this up to a question to the panel, right? Because in both, in in one way, it shows how far Alabama has come. And in another way, it shows there's still a lot of growth left on this team. Take that how you will. That's both a positive and a negative. But question to the Mm -hmm. panel. If I would have told you that Alabama in Kyle Stadium, which is a tough place to play, let's be honest here. Yeah, They would have averaged less than one yard per carry, (laughs) 0.9. Would have lost. Had 16 (laughs) penalties and given up six sacks and eight tackles for loss. Everybody and their grandmother would have told me Alabama got killed. And it would have been tough to argue it. But that shows something that I think many of us have seen in this team, why we haven't outright panicked. There is a lot of talent on this team. Guys, it's one of the things I kept talking about whenever we got done watching that Texas game, and I came back and I said, hey, I got the opportunity to watch the All-22, and I simultaneously feel better and worse. I felt worse because we had opportunities and we let them slip. I felt better because we had opportunities and let them slip. Mm. This wide receiving core is not the wide receiving core of last year. They're generating Mm -hmm. separation, right? Like they Mm -hmm. are actually generating separation. Milrow had a coming out party today, an absolute coming out party. That one interception he threw, you'd love to have it back. I understand completely where he was going, but guys, let's give credit where it's due. Bryce Anderson is a safety that Bama recruited. They wanted him. And he has been great for Texas A&M all year. That young man at A&M has been the leader of that defense in that secondary. He's one of their better players. He made a great play. I know Jalen Milrow wants that bat. Can't have that. But that's also a great A&M safety who made a great play right there. At the end of all this, guys, I think there's something you can both be happy about and frustrated with. And it's the same point. Because, Lucian, something you said before this week, you thought that Bama was going to really have a coming out party in this game. And I think in a lot of ways they did. Alabama sent a message to college football, but they had the opportunity to put college football on notice. And that's what's got to change. This is a team that had the opportunity to put college football on notice and understand there's a difference between people saying, oh, Bama fought and they beat Texas A&M. That's a good win. This is an improving Alabama team as opposed to Mm -hmm. what we could have done. Have all of college football look and said, oh, Bama is figuring it out and they're really dangerous. They could have, Bama left a lot of meat on the bones. That's both a positive and a negative. (laughs) The penalties have got to be cleaned up. If that gets cleaned up, guys, this is, this defense is spectacular. Like unbelievable. And Caleb Downs, that last pass that Johnson caught, I'm telling you this, and I, I'm betting everything on it. I'll, I'll bet you, I'll bet all the good viewers at home a bottle of Shady Mile, ladies and gentlemen. Shady Mile is best enjoyed after a, a great win. Oh, wow. Shady Mile, rye and wheat. We have the whole. But <laughs> in two weeks, that's an interception. Yep. He, he was that that's close to jumping that route. Exactly. In mm-hmm. two weeks, that's, that's a house call. The young yep. man is special. That that that's 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 what I have to say about this. I, I think that there's a lot of takeaways from this game. You can be frustrated, but there is a lot of positives. 
Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Man. Oh yeah. Let's uh let's get this uh super chat. So we got Jason Bernard with two dollars. At least we threw a slant today. No kidding That's about true. time. <laughs> <laughs> William Morris, big bill from New York, five dollars. A boy being Ten Smith were great today. I wish they would let Milro run some wildcat plays up the middle. He had some lanes. Uh, that's an excellent point. I'm really just mystified as to why we haven't seen anything like that yet. And it's something we talk about every week. And, Ty, uh, to your point, I blame Josh Pate for this. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because before the season started, he actually spoke it into existence. He said, fans, do not be surprised if Alabama struggles by week after week and barely gets it done. You, you might even have some fans ready to jump off the boat. And then all of a sudden, it just clicks, and they start killing everybody in, in their path. Okay, I think we've waited long enough. Can we please start killing folks in our path? <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. Another thought on the game. I, I, I'm starting to kind of believe that the rumors were true about Miro's leg injury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, start he, was relu- he, was, he was reluctant to – um. To just take off and let, and let it rip. A lot of times he stayed there looking for when he normally would have been gone. He stood there, and took a sack, or just waited too long. He didn't. He didn't just let it rip. It's kind of like he was hampered a little bit, not completely hurt, but it was like he was scared to the the to, to, to just pull out like he normally does. Because normally it's one run that he makes every game that's like this close from housing it. He didn't do that today, and I don't think it had nothing to do with the pass rush. I think that he was it was. <laughs> Some truth to the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, uh, here's something right here. Right. The inquisitive prince, five dollars. You're wrong. No way, Alabama should have won by two touchdowns. The score should have been 52 to 10. Undisciplined and too many missed opportunities hurt us. Let's talk about undisciplined play for a minute, specifically the offensive line, and more specifically, our offensive line coach, Eric Wolford. <laughs> Guys, before he came to us, we had high praise coming from all the analysts and magazines yeah. and publications everywhere because he was a Joe Moore Award finalist, a guy that was able to put together incredible lines at Kentucky. Ty, you've talked about the recruits he pulled in. I have not yet seen the accolades yet that I feel like he should have to this point at Alabama. A lot of the pre-snap penalties and just being utterly lost. and You know, we won, but – we gave up six sacks today. How many six? How many sacks total? Can somebody get a number for this season that we've given up today? That's that's not that's not growth at all. And, every, and each week I keep hearing the offensive line's getting better, guys. They're gelling. They're finding the the right rotation, but the sacks are still there. The penalties are still there. Seth McLaughlin and his whatever he's got going on, snapping the ball is still there. Do we point this towards Wolford? Do we point this towards the players? Guys, help me to make this sense, and then when is it all going to stop? Because you talk to any former offensive lineman. I talked to Wesley Britt last week about it. He tells me it takes like two or three games before that line really starts getting jailed, and at that point they take off. We're not seeing that. We didn't see that with Doug Marone. Good Lord, that was a disaster. But we're playing worse under Wolford right now than we did under Marone. Chris, I'll start with you. Then we'll go to Dan, Lushan, Daquan, and Ty. You can finish it out. Well, well, first off, I I was wrong on the stat. I said every lineman got a penalty today. Everybody except for Booker. Um, and Booker is probably the only one that's playing like he deserves all conference accolades. It's, it's Tyler mm-hmm. Booker. But um, I, I'm blaming this on on, on Wolford, man, because it's been two years and we still look as bad as we did when we had Maroon. You know what I'm saying? We haven't looked good since 2020, since since Najee left. That's the last time we had an offensive line that imposed their will. When Landon Dickinson left, that was the last. Um, and Evan Neal, that was the last line that we had that just imposed their will on people. And it, I, I don't know what to attribute it to, but I, I think that I, I could kind of put it on J.C. Latham not – ever being that left tackle we thought he was going to be because normally we recruit those five star um, mm-hmm. tackles they'll start off on the right side or come in on the left side rich or whatever but latham was supposed to be that guy that moved over to the left side and showed up that left side now we're forced but he didn't so we're forced to play a young freshman there and a red shirt freshman there and and they're taking you know their lump they're going to be good but 
they're taking their lumps, and it, it shouldn't be that way. We never had problems protecting the quarterback, um, you know, under Saban like that. Maybe, maybe since not even when we had um Dominique Jackson, those guys, it wasn't as bad. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's it's just I don't I don't know what they attributed it to, but I, but it's, it's like we're not improving with, with, with penalties, like. Uh, it, it seems like all the blame put on Daryl Court. Daryl Court didn't play today, Mm-mm. and you know, and we still had nine false start penalties, and so we can't blame it on Daryl Court today. There wasn't he wasn't out there, so so what is it, you know? And mm-hmm. it's, it's 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 and it's the, it's been the same line: Booker at left guard, probably left tackle, Latham at right tackle, you know, McLaughlin at center. Do do, but at least we didn't have any bad besides that one. Hiccup that he had that that hit snap, he didn't snap the ball bad today. That's a positive. But yeah. other than that, I really can't take too many positives away from the offensive line play today. Other than that time they gave Miro time, but when they're rushing four, you're supposed to give time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, before, <laughs> I, but before we hand it off to Dan, we got a couple of super chats to get to. James Vamina nine ninety nine, and then Davis Lewis Love five dollars. No screens, no draws, no design quarterback runs can. Our guards pull. Can we snap the ball? Find out next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. And then just below him, we got Mark Christian, $5. We have a crazy defense. Once we cut the penalties, this team becomes elite. All right, Dan, pick up where your brother left off, sir. Yeah, I, I don't put as much on Wolford as Chris does. I, I think – the issue is we're still playing musical chairs on the offensive line. We had another new starter this week, you know, so it does take time for offensive line to jail. And, you know, we, we, we talk about the sacks that they give up. A lot of sacks are taken when he leaves the pocket, you know, which he shouldn't be taking. If he throw the ball away, we wouldn't be talking about as many sacks, but mm-hmm. you know, we, we, we also have to help our guys out. You know what I'm saying? We, the, the play call, we don't, we don't, we got a mobile quarterback. We don't roll them out. We don't move the pocket. You know what I'm saying? We don't we don't run the quick swing. We ran one slant, you know, uh today, you know, but we, we got we got to give them easier throws, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, these little seven step drops with Miro, you know, that 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 can become a problem. You know what I'm saying? Especially yep. if we're not establishing the running game. Right. So, you know, we, we have to, you know, put our athletes in the best position to be able to be successful don parker five dollars we see flashes of true bama murder ball but the execution and penalties are killing this team why hasn't it all clicked yet with the offense reese all right lushan if you 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 can address this or if you want to continue on with the offensive line conversation pick your poison sir um i'm gonna hit that offensive line so i already had something going for that um it's the discipline yep. and communication on the offensive line that I'm not seeing. I think uh, both uh, Chris and Dan le- uh, led to it, saying that uh, the fact that we're playing musical chairs every week, week in and week out, does not allow our offensive line the time they need to get comfortable playing next to one another. Right, right, right. If they don't have that time in the trenches playing next to the guy they're playing to, they don't develop that trust. And most importantly, they don't have that communication. And I think that's a lot of what's going on with the sacks we're having, too. They're not identifying what's going on in the defensive stunts. Mm -hmm. And also, part of that, too, part of the sacks, too, is Jalen Miller has to recognize some of the things that are going on that are right in his face, specifically when a safety or a corner walk right up on the line and just tee off Mm -hmm. on him. Right. And also, too, I'm going to hit on it again. Tommy Reese, again, needs to prepare all these guys because he is the offensive coordinator. And in the, at the end of the day, it's if it fails, it's the athlete's part to a point. But I feel that, again, they could be a little bit better prepared going out there, especially going in the, in the environment like that. I mean, people don't take into consideration that place is crazy. Mm-hmm. The energy, the vibes you're getting, like, it, it's a fight, you know. The 26, we won. So, I mean, Bama Nation, be happy. Those of us that support Jalen, you know, you, you got to be happy with the win. The O-line showed up when they need to. 
They need to get first downs. They got first downs. They have a lot of work to do, and I think they know that. We'll see what happens going forward. Let's see, Dave E. That first touchdown pass, the first that first down pass in the last possession could have cost that, us. Yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> I, I, I was scratching my head on that one too. It's like, why, Jalen? I mean, maybe he was caught up in the moment. Jalen was going, and he he just wasn't thinking, you know, where his feet were. No, I, let, me, I, let me comment on that. He looked that wide, and the guy was uncovered. Right, the guy he was, was uncovered. Was Nobody <laughs> within fifteen yards of him. Right. If he makes the throw, it's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. Like right. He skips the throw 10 yards away from the receiver. I don't understand that. Now, if you're going to do that, you damn sure will complete the pass. <laughs> <laughs> don't skip Agreed. It. My Lord, Jalen. Come on, man. We love you one moment, and the next minute you do something like that, we got to clean that up, brother. You could have bounced was, the back was, 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 was he trying to hurry up? How wide open he was. Was he trying to hurry up to make sure that play wasn't reviewed? <laughs> no, no. Trying to hurt right. to the line make sure he looked back there and saw the receiver uncovered, so he tried to get it out to him. The receiver, like you know, why are you throwing me the ball? <laughs> was there Malik oh, Benson out there? Was yeah, it Benson? yeah. That, yeah. Nobody oh, was going to catch him. He just lobbed it up to him. To answer, Big Bill, did Reese call that stupid that <laughs> pass at the end? Saban was furious. Who do you think was responsible for that? Honestly, I think it was Milrow. Like you said, guys, he saw the guy wide open, so he had to take the shot. Just unfortunately, he didn't put enough behind it to yes, connect. Turner. All right, Daquan, your thoughts on the offensive line? What, who, who's to blame? These guys, the – Lucia makes a good point. The musical chairs, it completely, right. I agree, disrupts continuity with that offensive line. You can't get any kind of chemistry built if you're constantly swapping guys in and out. But let's hear from you. Yeah, man, I agree with Lucian and uh, Chris and Dan. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to keep getting on the coaches, man. I, I think uh, a lot has to do with the players' mentality. And, um, you know, what I, what are they thinking about? Sometimes, man, it's pressure. A lot of guys, man, can't handle that pressure, man, when it's time. Mm-hmm. Uh, like like uh, like uh, y'all said, man, it, it's, it's tough playing over there. Yeah, any man playing anywhere, going to the opponent's house anywhere, it's tough playing over there, man. But it's uh, it's they undisciplined and not disciplined enough, bro. There's no communication with Lucian said, man. And like you said, they're not getting enough continuity around themselves either, man. I think communication, being disciplined, man, and and stop folding under pressure, bro, is would be a key to success, man. If we choose to do that, like I I can't keep continue to put it on the coach. Cause that's that's what I first I, that's what I tend to do all the time, man. What the hell is the coach doing? What is he doing? What 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 is he thinking? What what is he putting these guys in this position to do? And a lot of times it's not the coach. The coach is preparing them each week. You know what I mean? It's up to the player to go out there. The coach can talk to him until he blew in the face. It's up mm, to that player to true. get out there and be disciplined <laughs> enough to execute that call of what he called. You feel what I'm saying? So it's just not all on the coach, man. It's on the players as well. And Jalen, too, is, is some is on Jalen as well. He has to get the damn ball out faster than what he is. He's holding sometimes he's holding the damn ball too long. Uh sometimes he's thinking too much. Um, he's not setting his feet. Sometimes he's just flicking the ball. Those the short throws that he's doing, the short throws, he's man, it's the his short throws are terrible. Man, a fit, I mean 20 yards and over. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> man, hey, 20 yards and over, it's, it's, it's a done deal. We we got that. That's in the bag. But 10 yards and back? Oh, man. <laughs> really, uh, oh, man, man. Oh, bubble screen. I don't know what's going on with that, man. Maybe that's why we're not seeing the bubble screens. There, there's the answer Maybe. right there. <laughs> Maybe, man. They saw it in practice like, oh, hell no. Don't smash that. Right. I can't keep putting all on the coach, man. I think it's it, – it's, Sometimes it's it's more on the players and what their mentality is and what they're thinking. Yeah. Real quick, Jason Bernard, two dollars super chat. <laughs> Can we please get Kool Aid off punt returns? Resounding yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Because he yeah, he so fumbles right. a sna- he he muffs a snap a uh, a catch every single game, and at one, some point it's not going to roll in our favor. Ray Parr on two dollars. I sure hope. Malachi is okay. Absolutely. He has tried so hard to get back yep. healthy and 100% mm-hmm. to close his career out the right way. I sure yep. would hate for him to go out with another injury yep. and let his time at Bama be <sighs> marked by that. Ty, 
Well, you've right. listened to a lot of this too, man. We got to hear from you to properly close this topic out. What are your thoughts on the offensive line situation? Look, maybe if if we're getting super technical, maybe you can give one or two of the penalties on to preparation. Like, hey, you 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 should have had some film on A and M doing that little shift right before the snap that kept drawing them off. But guys, after the second one, it's like, damn, the coach isn't out there. Like they've showed you this little shift twice. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe fair. Maybe you should have prepped for it better. But now you've seen it, and, and it's not. It's, it's not like rocket science. It's the shift that's happening. That's the point where it's like, okay, that's where y'all need to clean it up. I think the point that was made about the lack of communication on the offensive line, I think that is the winner, honestly. Because, gentlemen, Jalen Milrow is a young quarterback, right? He is still very much well learning. Hope You would hope in a perfect world that your center would be calling out blitzes, calling out mm-hmm. different coverages, setting that, helping your young quarterback. Right. Now, it doesn't seem that that's happening, or if it is, it doesn't seem that the communication is going well. Um, that, to me, is what's standing out. I, I can't necessarily totally blame Wolford because we've had musical chairs along the offensive right. line. The mm-hmm. left tackle is a true freshman who is getting better. Mm-hmm. He picked up the stunt yeah. beautifully against Mississippi State. He had some really good plays today blocking some guys that are going to be first-rounders, quite frankly. Like, he he held his own against some guys that will be first-rounders. But he's a true freshman. He's going to get beat. At a certain point, it has to come together. And, guys, I also think maybe they're a little bit too big, right? Like, yeah. maybe being yeah. – maybe there's a reason that there's not an NFL offensive line that's over 350 pounds average. Like, maybe that's a thing for a reason – because for as powerful as they are, they don't look as quick. They're looking right. quicker each week. But once they get that quickness to them, oh, boy. Like, I, I think it, it, it's there. But it, I, I think Lucian hit it. Everybody here has hit it perfectly. The offensive line, like, they still have a lot of meat on that bone. It's up to them to achieve it. Real quick, we got Ray Parham, $2. The offensive line held up. Melro held the ball too long i agree i mean there were what two two sacks where he was trying to escape the pocket and he was trying to really get away and they got him which counted as sacks right so like Mm -hmm. they got six sacks but putting those into the context of having a mobile quarterback it kind of paints a little bit of a different picture right i agree don parker just saw a video clip of miss terry hugging terry on arnold after the game Maybe she put a foot in the hind parts at halftime. <laughs> yes, apparently so. But, man, can we put the foot in the hind parts in the pregame so we can come out of the tunnel firing on all cylinders? I want to see a complete game, guys. So, so guys, I'll ask this, this question before we start giving our players of the game. Where does Alabama go from here? How do you see their mentality at this point when now uh, we have everything in front of us? All of our goals are still there, and they're becoming more solidified. We have the lead in the West for the moment. Does the intensity continue to grow, especially with this weird 11 a.m. kick on homecoming next week against Arkansas, which that timing doesn't make sense at all? How do you see things going from here? Start with Ty, then Daquan, Lushan, Dan, and then Chris. Guys, there's blood in the water at Arkansas. I, mm. I, I've personally rooted for Sam Pittman. I think that he's a great coach for Arkansas. Or at least I've wanted him to be a great coach yeah. for Arkansas because the fans seem to love him. The players, all of that looked like it was going great. I really wanted it to work, but there's blood in the water. And we saw what Alabama did to A&M today an a and defense that is significantly better. And an a and offense, quite frankly, that hasn't found itself, but has more talent than the Arkansas offense, if I'm being honest, especially mm-hmm. Evan Stewart, Moose Muhammad. That's, that's, that's an unbelievable receiving core. And Alabama yep. handled it. There's blood in the water there. It's up to Alabama to take advantage because the week after that is Tennessee. The last yep. thing you want to see is them overlooking Arkansas, thinking about Tennessee. They can just destroy Arkansas, send that message to college football, and then go and handle Tennessee. 
it, the future is theirs for the taking. It's all about what they want to do with it. Yep, yep. DQ, what are your thoughts? Hey, didn't you have a pick six against Arkansas? I did. I did. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I wasn't going to talk about that. But <laughs> I mean, we, we love to hear it. <laughs> it's, it's fitting right now. <laughs> I had a pick against Arkansas, but I dropped it. <laughs> oh, man. But no, Ty, uh, I agree with you, Ty. Um, it, it's all about what we do, man. And it's all about what we do at the end of the day. Um, I know I get on here and I talk about, you know, uh, you know, the penalties and all that other stuff, man. But, like, each week we have progressed. Each week uh, our D-line has gotten better. Our O-line has gotten better. Um, and I, I still think we have a ways to go. Um, but I, I think we're doing okay. But we, we're doing better each week, man. Um but it's it's all it's all about what we do. I mean, we are we are either we're gonna be our our worst enemy, man, or, or we're gonna be our best person. You feel what I'm saying? It's all about what we do. It, it's not it's not, nothing against our opponents, nothing against each team that we play each week because they all have talent. Everybody has talent, man. But I don't see anybody better than us, man, on our best day. I just don't, man. I don't honestly, man. I just, I just don't pound for pound each player. I'm talking about roster for roster. I don't see it. If we do what we supposed to do, if we do what we supposed to do, man. So I, I think, man, we, hey, if we handle business. I think we can. I think we can go far, man. Lushan. Um, I think a big focus going into this uh, homecoming week needs to be taking care of business. Yeah. I think we need to come into this game and execute and have discipline right off the rip. They, there needs to be a message like Ty said, and it needs to happen quick because I feel like in this game we can um, expand a little bit and get some players some reps and maybe rest some other players yep. that are going to be needed later on in the season. And it's yeah. also important in like today, Malachi went down. I'm not saying injuries are going to happen, but let's face it, it's football. Right. And this is Alabama. They're going to happen. So the That's more it. rotation we can get in the game, mm -hmm. Jalen comes in, we score three quick, we start running the ball well, and we start seeing players get rotation in. Like like DQ said, by the end of the season, I'm not I, I don't see anybody in the nation, I agree with that, that has oh, the talent we have and the resiliency to go through what we've been through and still yep. be where we're at in this point in the season because yep. we've taken lumps to the chin all season. For and sure. It's put us down, but we've gotten back up and we've answered the call. And I think a, a big part of that was how the defense responded the day after Malachi Moore went out because he's yep. been our field general all season. And uh, what was big, though, he was still out on the field. I saw in the second half without his pass, still in his jersey, still cheering his teammates on. And that 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 says a, a bigger thing to me and should say a bigger message to Bama that there is still a player that still holds the old cold very high. Right. Dan. Yes, man. I think I think uh we still control our destiny, which is a good thing. You know what I'm saying? We it, this was a monumental win for us and our program yep. um you know li, li, we control our destiny man so we 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 still got everything in front of us you All know right. what i'm saying we get to the sec championship game we still in in charge in the sec west so we we we're gonna get our opportunity as long as we keep doing what we're supposed to do we just mm -hmm. got to clean up the, the mental <laughs> error we're having too many mental errors and uh, another play i want to acknowledge how about that double catch by Jason McClellan. Hey, tough. <laughs> tough. Was huge it was. It was, man. You know, we, we didn't mention that, but that's something I thought I'd throw in there. But, <laughs> that was huge. Uh, you know, I'm excited. I'm cautiously optimistic still. You know what I'm saying? So we it's still some things that we got to clean up. But I I, I like what I'm seeing from Miro now. He just got to improve on the intermediate throws. Yes. You know, and we got to, you know, at, and uh, today showed me that I like Tommy Reese a little bit more than Bill O'Brien. Just, <laughs> just, just a little bit more. So I, I put him a little bit. He moved yeah. to Bill O'Brien this week for me. 
So, you know, we just got to do more to help our athletes out, man. We got we got we got playmakers and man, Jermaine Burton, man, all he had to do was look at uh the the D, D that was covering him, man, say boo. He, <laughs> he had one at the line of scrimmage, and he knew that. He would tell right. him the guy, you know what I'm saying? The, the guy was not ready for that. You know, Jermaine Burton established himself as our go-to receiver. So, you know what I'm saying? We he just a hothead, so that's why we, we're not trusting him like we're supposed to. And if you give him a week off, you know, hey, we might need to give him a week off and get him ready for Tennessee. If he played like this after – a uh, week's rest. We might need to rest him again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, he's always like money. I like our offensive Tony Brown. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's, what, that's exactly that's what he is. Comparison. That's you a know, great yeah. comparison. I, 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 I guess you have to have those crazy guys on, on the show. You got to. You got to have them, yeah. So, you know, it, I like the fire I see from them. I, want, I like to see more fire from my old linemen. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I, I want our old line mm-hmm. to pick up the mentality. And the thing, you know, we, we say right about right. Chris, I forgot to mention earlier, when you were talking about J.C. Latham, you know, moving the left tackle, you got to remember, this is on his fourth year playing offensive tackle. So, you know, that, that's just something, you know, he he's still learning. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, four years, I was driving a Fort Lee. Oh. <laughs> oh Making that's- babies. But we're not- <laughs> yeah, that's the damn truth. You got 12 kids. Anyway, Chris, finish this topic up, and then we're going to go, to go through our players Damn. of the game. <laughs> no, I don't, man. Ain't nothing on 12 kids. Man. Seven. Eight. <laughs> yeah, seven. Yeah, 12 sounds better. Just like so you remember the Titans. Brady Bunch, y'all. Brady Bunch. Brady Bunch. Brady Bunch. Hey, so check this out, though. Um, I, I feel like um, the Arkansas game would tell us a lot. If we go around and just – if we go out and, and blow Arkansas out, like – Handle them all the way through. I, I feel like we're gonna run the table all the way all the way through the ACC championship because now it's it's to the point of where how we handle success. Do we take what we uh, show today and build off of that, or do we regress? And if we don't, if we come out flat against Arkansas and, and this is one of those nail biters where we end up having to pull away in the fourth quarter, we 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 probably won't won't run the table. We'll probably have another loss somewhere in there. Um, mm-hmm. So the Arkansas game will tell us a lot. Because we had the Arkansas, and you know we owe Tennessee, so you know that game is circled. That game is circled. We should, we should like we want to beat Tennessee like a rented mule, and then we have an off week before LSU, and that off week is going to freshen up our defense because our defense is going to welcome that challenge against LSU. They're going to welcome that challenge, but LSU right now can't can't bust their way out of the paper sack um, <laughs> defensively. So um, we'll we'll know by next week. That's 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 going to tell us a whole lot. Um, and, and then to that point, to where, like I said, um, where you were talking about Jason McClellan, that third that third down catch, that was huge, man. For him to get yeah. up so quickly and th- after he double called it, he kind of knocked it to himself and got up real quick so his knee wasn't down. And to pick up the first down, th- just that type of awareness thinking on his feet like that. Mm-hmm. Man, that is – that's the thing of beauty, man. And I, I just want us to see us feed him more, man, because yeah. he's like the type that gets better as, as, as he gains his carries. He gets better and better and better. Um but defense, like our defense, is gonna should keep us in every game, man. We have our opportunities just like we had against Texas. We still had opportunities. We just didn't, you know, capitalize. But Bill Rowe learned from that, and um, so I, I, like we we're getting better, man. We, we're becoming a scary football team because mm-hmm. this team two years ago we lost there. This team last year, if they would have had to go there, I believe we probably would have lost there uh, last year. So, mm-hmm. um. To go in there and win, man, that's huge, man, because a lot of people at this point had us um, four and two, you know, or yep. a lot, everybody, like, uh, Desmond Howard, I'm calling him out right now. Wait, one second, Chris, Chris. Do- one second, one second. Uh, Daquan has to go. We want to say we appreciate your brother. We appreciate you always him. jumping on when we need you. Uh, yeah, I know we're going to have to put you on payroll soon, brother. <laughs> oh, Roll Tide. Yeah, bro. Roll tide, the corn. Roll tide, the corn. One, one quick question for the corn. What's that, right. bro? Yeah, if if I were to give you a bag of pecans, would that make it uh, these nuts? I tell you what, bro. Y'all never see so amazing. Bro. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas, I'm out. Hey, man. All right, All right, man. Man. Roll tide, All right, bro. <laughs> Hey man, I'm calling out Dez Howard, man. I'm so sick of that dude. That dude has picked us to lose every week. Chris Doran. 
Keep going. Oh, Lord, him him too. Too. Good Lord. Oh, oh man. Joel like, Clatt. Joel Clatt is not that bad. He's not as he, bad. He, as said, he bad. said Texas A&M was better in every position. No, Doran said that. Was that. Oh, no, Doran, Doran said that. that. Clatt, Clatt actually picked us to run the table. No, I, no, I would listen this week. He picked A and M to beat us. Oh, I mean that's, I mean, but Dez Howe is just a hater, man. Like he, he just going off that Texas game. Like we haven't improved. He picked us to lose the Ole Miss. He picked us to lose the Texas A and M. He picked, like he's picked us to lose three times already this year. Like, like I'm, I'm just, I, I just want him to eat his words. I just, I'm just so ready for him to eat his words. Somebody need to call him out on that on game day. Gotcha, gotcha. All but right, you guys. You got to be wrong. <laughs> hey, let him keep fueling our fire. Time to name our player of the game, offensive, defensive, and then we'll close things out. And we'll start with Ty Hayes, Lucian, and then Dan and Chris, and I'll end it all. Go right yeah. ahead, Ty. You already know for defense, I got to give it to the true freshman, Caleb Downs. And I think there are several different players you can give it to, but I think I, I'm also going with my heart on this one. This is a player I was super excited about whenever he committed to Alabama. I was really excited when he signed with Alabama, and I remain excited about his future. I think he is going to be a special, special player. Offensively, I don't think there's – I mean, I think there is a different answer, but I think a correct answer, not the only correct answer – but Jalen Milrow, guys, because a lot mm. was asked of him this week. You heard a lot of people say, if Alabama can't run the football, will Jalen Milrow be able to beat this team? And he did. He did. He threw for 321 yards. Brandon Clear with the 49.99 chat. He says, if Milrow can continue to get comfortable in the pocket, we will be headed in the right direction. Some of the sacks were on him. Stay blessed, fellas. Roll Tide. Completely Thank agree, you, Brandon. Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. Real hard Brandon. to gauge. But Did yeah. you plan that, Ty? Because that kind of fell right into your lap and your point. <laughs> yeah, no, I did not. That just worked out beautifully. Um, and it, that, that, that proves the point. You know what I mean? What better way? I swear to God, if if if, if Bama would have not had those penalties, y'all would have seen an appearance from Blaze Hayes right now. Ty Hayes would have left the building. Blaze Hayes would be here right now. Y'all don't know about Blaze Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're we're ready, man. Bring him to the stage. <laughs> don't 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 say don't the bear. here right now. <laughs> Lou Sean, tell us your MVP's offense defense. Um, Justin, Lou I Sean. gotta kind of, I gotta kind of throw something in here. There 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 should be a offensive and defensive and an actual player of the game, and okay. I'm gonna go with that first. Okay. Will Riker. Fair. No kidding. Will Riker, Fair. I'm telling you what, that dude, <laughs> he's him. That big guy. Hey, you want me to go out and punt? Hey, I'll, just, hey, I'll head out there and hit hit like a 60-yard punt. You know, no big deal. I got you, Coach Saban. Yeah. You know, whatever you need. But uh, defensive, I'm going to oh, go yeah. away from uh, Real I, quick, Will Riker, he averaged 41.3 punt yards per punt today. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go away from uh, ties because, you know, I'm a huge Caleb Down fan. It's probably my, one of my favorite players. But um, I'm going to go with the big heavy Tim Keenan today, defensive player. Led the team in tackles. He was mean. He was physical. And I love seeing a defensive lineman put his hand all over that guy when he's on the ground just to lift himself up, just to assert that extra bit of domination. And on the offensive side, I'm going Isaiah Bond. That dude showed incredible poise. Now I know Jane or I know uh Jermaine Burton went off, but Bond played within the scheme and he kept his head and he didn't make any penalties today. So that's why he's my offensive player of the game. Okay. Chris, uh Dan, sorry about that, Chris. Yeah, don't forget the the, the better looking brother. <laughs> <laughs> man, but, man, let's go, let's go with defensive player of the game. You know, I'm I'm gonna go with Dallas Turner. You know, he showed he started imposing his will in the second half. You know, hey, he's tied for the nation lead in sacks. So you know, what I'm saying I will point that out. Offensive player of the game, I got to give it to Miro because we got more from Miro than we were expecting because our run game wasn't working. So Miro had complete the 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 forward pass and that what takes AM came to the, the game thinking hey we're gonna make him push the ball downfield and he did it 
he did it. He stepped in and did it. You know what I'm saying? So he he kind of put the team on his back. You know, I like to see him get out the pocket a little more. You know, t- throw the ball away. You know, he'd he'd had much better stats. You know what I'm saying? But uh, player of the game. You know, hey, Jalen Milro. All right, all right, Chris, he got. Uh, offensive player of the game, I got to give it to Miro. Bur- I w- it would have been Burton, but Burton did some, you know, a fumble, costly fumble, and he just did some crazy stuff today. Mm-hmm. Um, but Miro kept it clean. Um, defensively, oh, yeah. I'm giving it to Caleb Downs. That that interception, I don't know, man. It's, a, it's cold defensive players. Caleb Downs and Chris Braswell. <laughs> Bra- Braswell balled out, too. Yeah. Um, that, the end of blocking and, and scooping score for a touchdown that he got robbed by, by a dumb penalty. Um, those two I still don't see definitely that. a co defensive player of the game. Will Riker, man, special teams player, without a doubt. He's a mm-hmm. he's a weapon, man. Isn't it? Didn't they say he was eighth on the all-time scoring list for um college yeah, football? College football. Yeah. Man, that's that's insane, man. A kicker, <laughs> all-time college football. You no know. big deal. Grove no award deal. winner. <laughs> hey, he, he's definitely if he doesn't win the growth he should have won it his freshman year. Yeah, if he doesn't win it this year, it's it's hot. The, the award take loses its luster. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. No way he yeah. shouldn't win it. Well, they gave it to a guy. Well, they gave it to a guy that uh, you talk played about like five games. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> his freshman year, that was crazy. Well, mine's pretty obvious because it's hard to deny it. I let, let off the show with Jalen Milrow. I'm going to end the show with Jalen Milrow and my defensive guy. One A is definitely Tim Keenan. He was an absolute monster that no one could account for or even hope to account for. And then Caleb Downs. Big players make big plays in the most critical of moments. And that young man was not a freshman today. He played like a senior. Got to give a shout-out to both of those guys. All right, before we head out, I'm going to let y'all go around the room, tell everybody how they can find you on social media. And, hey, if you want to pump your OnlyFans, you're more than welcome. But (laughs) – We'll start out with Chris, then Dan, Lucian, and then Ty Hayes. My um, my only my oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can you can um my um social media, my Facebook is Chris K James Senior. Uh, my Instagram is CKJ Senior thirty two, and my um Twitter is well X whatever they call it is Coach Chris James. Uh, my only fans. For this week is three and out, uh, <laughs> because that, that that defense, man, three and out, baby. <laughs> Dan, what you got? All right, you can catch me on X. Well, I'll probably catch you on X. You know, <laughs> <laughs> final whistle, Dan. Are you catch me here weekly? Twice a week now, you know what I'm saying? We do the post-game show. You catch me every Tuesday night live, you know, at the final whistle. Um, my only fans, you know, this week is three minutes in a cloud of dust. <laughs> and the promo, code, the promo code, we're going to dedicate this to the win over the Aggies. T-Bag and Aggie. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear Ty's wheels turning. I feel like this is going to be epic. Luke Sean. Um, you can find me on X, uh, Rolush21, uh, also on Instagram, uh, Lucian, Facebook, same thing. Uh, this week, you can also find me on OnlyFans. We're going in Texas, we're going X rated bimbos 317, (laughs) promo code (laughs) Guzzlin. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Time out. My God. Time out. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Pause. This is a, this is a Christian oh. show, which is why I thought about this, guys. Oh, and, here it goes. You know, I, I thought we've, we've done the OnlyFans from the building so many times. Why not go see something? Hit the road. That's popular these days, right? So you can catch me this week on the OnlyFans, the 12th man van, banging out all the wins on <laughs> Kyle Field. And it's going to be a great time. I mean, I, I have to switch it up. You almost saw Blaze Hayes. That would have been a treat. Let me tell you what. I oh. But nonetheless. Next week. There. Next week. 
Yeah. yeah. We want to see Blaze next week. You get Blaze on the show next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring Elroy, Justin. Hey, uh, hey, fans, you heard it right here. We'll put the vote in your hands. Do we see Blaze Hayes and Elroy <laughs> James on the final whistle? Cast your vote right now. But, yeah, you can follow us on all of our social media at the Bama Standard on every platform except for TikTok. It's a little different at the underscore Bama I Standard. Sure is. Oh, wow. Hey. Wow. Oh, we got a like treat right now, guys. Feelings. You like you like you're in the postseason with the Phillies. I just know it's tough. It looks it's like he's about to shoot a movie with Mark Wahlberg. Hey, John, Been, there, done that. Been there, done that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I figured. Well, I you appreciate it. Like <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> hey, I told you we were about to hit the road. I told y'all we were about to hit the road. Road trip, road trip, road, road trip. trip, road trip. <laughs> Roll through, fellas. Yeah, I like that bus idea. Hey, that Blaze oh, yeah, got to earn his living somehow. You know, Donald I mean? Wilson coming to a town near you. That's it. <laughs> we appreciate Hide your every- ladies, baby. <laughs> Hide your ladies from Ty. <laughs> we appreciate everybody jumping on this post game show. Everybody in the chat, thank you for always doing your thing. And then also, we appreciate. Alabama doing their thing. Well, that's going to do it for all of us. Roll Tide, everybody. Roll Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide.